What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. Now, I'm a different kind of cat. I'm into different things. I have different curiosities. And I was sitting around one day and I was kind of wondering, I wonder what like, you know, different funeral customs there are. How are the death cared for after they're deceased? And I kind of went to the old Google machine and did some Google searching and I found an article. It's a website called scoopwoop.com. And it is 15 of the strangest funeral customs from around the world. Some of this stuff um, I knew about. Some of this stuff wasn't so shocking. And some of this stuff did plain and simple shock me. This article was from 2015, but I found it very interesting. And I will probably in the comment section below or the description box below, if you're watching this, depending if you're watching this or listening to this, um, I will try to have a link to this article if you would choose to you know, want to read this article for yourself. Now, the first one here, burial beads turn the dead into colorful beads. Many people in South Korea opt to compress the remains of the dead person into gem-like beads in different colors, which are then displayed at home. Now, I'm going to throw pictures up here of each one as well with, you know, what's in the article here. This one's different, but not really different because it's like, you know, we kind of do this already with people that we cremate. We kind of, we can have them, you know, made into jewelry and stuff like that so we can keep with us. Um, so that isn't a big shocker to me, that one, because um, we kind of do something similar like that. You know, after we have a family member cremated, we can make them into like a necklace or a portion of their ashes made into a necklace or whatever. Um, this didn't say if it was through cremation. It didn't really get into like how it's done, but it's just, you know, they're, they're, uh, the remains are compressed into gem-like beads. Um, and that, that, you know, it's cool. It's like, you know, I can't, you know, it's, it's the things that I don't really agree with, I'm not judging because it's like, you know, there's different cultures and they have different beliefs and different ways to care for their dead. So, you know, it's all good, but that was, um, that was the first one. All right. <clears throat> not sure if I agree with this one too much, but, um, it's what they call endocannibalism, eating the dead. I don't know. In the old days, the people of New Guinea and the Wari people of Brazil would eat the dead in order to expel the fear and mystery that surrounds the concept of death. The Yanomami people also practice this. I mean, I love my family and I love my friends and, you know, everything, but I don't know if I would want to partake in eating them. That's, yeah, I don't think so, but... You know, that's, you know, different, different places, different cultures, you know, that's what they do, you know. And this one right here, this next one is one that I know I have followers that have uh, mentioned this before. And it's, you know, this is, some, to, to me, this is very different. Um, nothing wrong with it. And it's just very different. Um, become a memorial reef in the ocean. A company called U.S. Eternal Reefs compresses the remains into a sphere or reef ball that is attached to the reef in the ocean, providing a habitat for sea life. And it says probably leads to some curious fish. Now, that is different. That is cool. Um, you know, that's that's for somebody you, that would have to explain to their family that, yeah, you probably can't come visit my final resting place because I'm going to be out in the ocean somewhere. Um, so, you, you know, the families would have to accept the fact they probably wouldn't be able to visit you know, their final rest, the family member's final resting place. But I'm sure, you know, unless, unless the company that provides this provides coordinates, if you wanted to go out there on a boat somewhere or, you know, a charter boat or whatever, I don't know how that works completely, but it seems as though it'd be kind of hard for people to, to visit the final resting place. But like I said, nothing wrong with that, you know. Fama Dihana. Turning of the bones. Every, once every seven years, the people of Madagascar exhume the bodies of loved ones, wrap them in cloth, and dance with the corpse sacks. It probably smells pretty bad, so they spray it with wine and tell stories of their families. Another one that, you know, I'm probably not completely on board with. <laughs> but um, like I said, you know, the different cultures, different beliefs. Um, you know, that's, you know, it's all fine and dandy over there if they, if that's what they choose to do, you know. Buried in a fantasy coffin. I think I've heard of this kind of stuff before. 
In Ghana, people like to be buried in something that represents their lives. These include coffins shaped like planes for pilots, fish for fishermen, and a Mercedes for a businessman. So, you know, fantasy coffins, I do believe, you know, I've heard this before once or twice, and that's, you know, nothing wrong with that, you know, very, very different, you know, um, you know, something that represents the person that passed. Too bad we don't do that more here in the United States. I don't think we really, we really do a whole lot. Tibetan sky burial, offer the bodies to the birds. This was kind of shocking. It seemed a little shocking. Many, especially Buddhists, sometimes cut the body up into pieces and leave them on the hill for birds to feast on. The Buddhists see dead bodies as empty vessels and consider these sky burials an act of charity or compassion. So, yeah, that one is, whew, that one's different, you know. Um, I don't know if I'm going to add a picture of this one because they kind of show... Uh, person of skeletal remains and like the vultures picking at it so i don't know if i'm gonna add that one to this but um you know but if you're listening to this on the podcast the audio version you're not going to see any of these pictures but this video version i might be doing for youtube here yeah i might not add that um that <laughs> finger amputation in papua new guinea among the Danny people, the death of a loved one meant that any women or children related to the deceased had to cut off some of their fingers. This was done to drive away spirits and is now banned. Well, definitely, because if you had a bunch of family members that were passing at once, you'd be missing a whole lot of fingers. That's, um, that's for sure. And here's another one here. And I've heard of this one. This one is not such a shocker. I've kind of heard of this before. Jazz burials in New Orleans. With big horn band culture at the heart of New Orleans, it's not a surprise that they play music even in death. The funeral procession is led by a big horn band, which plays sad tunes at first, followed by upbeat jazz and blues numbers, accompanied by furious dancing. I, and I've heard of this before. They, it's, um, you know, it's like a celebration, you know, and it's a celebration of life. You know, and there's people that do that instead of having like something sad and, you know, down, they, they have a, they have, you know, in certain areas, they have a, a party in honor of the deceased. Blindfolded funeral. Northwestern Philippines blindfold their dead and place them next to the main entrance of the house. I, have you know, I have heard about different, different parts where like that, where they keep the body close, you know, um, you know, in the house or close to the house. Um, so that's not a big shocker. It's, you know, it's definitely not for me, but I have heard of this sort of thing, you know, before. Tingu Tinguin funeral, make it look like they're still alive. The Tinguin people of the Philippines dress bodies in their best clothes, sit them on a chair and place a lit cigarette in their lips. Um, kind of goes back to that video I did the other day of the extreme embalming where people are posed, um, prepared and posed in certain ways to look as if they're still with us. Um, not the exact same thing here, but it's, it's close, you know, that funeral posing kind of you know, thing I was talking about the other day. Cavettino tree burial. Those who live near Manila bury their dead in a hollowed out tree trunk. The tree is selected a while before a person's death. So they are buried in a hollowed out, uh, that's good. They have a casket, I guess, a hollowed out tree trunk, right? That's, that's different. That's that different, but it's kind of, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. I think. Apayo kitchen burial. The Apayo, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Who live in the North Philippines, bury their dead under their kitchen. Again, going back to what I was saying a minute ago about them, you know, keeping their dead close to them. You know, that's, you know, in their kitchen, underneath their kitchen. Environmental friendly burial. I, you know, we've heard of these before, you know. In this method, you skip the embalming process and get biodegradable woven willow caskets, which decompose in the ground. I've heard of these, these um, types of, this type of uh, way, and I've heard of these cemeteries before. And, um, you know. You know, you don't want all that, you know, you don't want to have to deal with all the chemicals and all the other stuff. Well, then there you go. Environmentally friendly burial, you know, there you go. A vulture funeral. 
Zero Astrian Vulture Funeral. The corpse is washed with bull urine, after which it is visited by a holy dog or sag sagdid. It is then placed atop the Tower of Silence, where it is swiftly devoured by vultures. These vultures seem to be getting pretty well fed. Oh, wow. That's that's a different one. And actually, there I don't think there is a picture that goes along with this. I am not sure on some of these. If, like I said, if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to include the pictures. Um, you know, I... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And the Haida Totem Pole Funeral. The Haida people of North America had a special ritual for the death of a chief or shaman. The body would be crushed to pulp with clubs and put in a suitcase box. The box would then be placed in a mortuary totem pole in front of the deceased person's house. That one is way different. You know, um, you know, to this day, we don't know if some of these are, some of these are still in effect. Um, you know, like I had read the other one a, a few a few uh, things ago that they was you know now banned. Some you know that you know um, I think the cutting of the fingers was the one that they don't do anymore, from what I read. But that was um, very different. Um, you know, the the, the fifteen different uh, you know the strangest burial customs from around the world. Um, Definitely, definitely different. Um, yeah, and, um, you know, like I said, who, you know, who are we to judge, you know, what someone's last wishes are or what the, the you know, the custom of their culture is. We can't, you know, and it, it is, it is what it is. And people want to be cared for the way they want to be cared for after death. And whatever you want and whatever your last wish is, is, you know, A-OK -okay with me. So thank you all so much for uh, listening to this. Very, very different, but very, very cool and very, very, uh, it's a learning experience, you know, um, looking up these different funeral customs and everything. And um, maybe I can look up a few more and do another another uh, deal with this in the future. But thank you all so much. And I'll be talking to you guys very, very soon. Peace out.